In these videos, I use chemicals that can cause burns and respiratory problems. If you are to replicate any of the experiments or procedures shown in my videos, please do so in a fume hood or outside, and please wear suitable gloves when handling acids. Hello everyone, welcome to my new video. I've broken this video down into chapters to make it a bit easier to navigate, so after a quick rundown of the equipment I'll be using, we'll go to chapter 1. This chapter is on recovering hydrochloric acid from copper chloride using distillation. I'll also explain some of the challenges of doing so. Chapter 2 will be on fractional distillation of the recovered acid to bring it to 20%. And finally, Chapter 3. I'll show you how to generate hydrogen chloride gas to bubble through the recovered acid to take it beyond its azeotrope. You can also use this method to make fresh hydrochloric acid. For this experiment, I will be using a simple distillation set and a hot plate to distill the copper chloride. I'll also be using a graduated cylinder and hydrometer to test the specific gravity of the acid. A Vigro column for the fractional distillation. Some pH test strips to test for the presence of acid. And a gas washing bottle to bubble hydrogen chloride through the recovered acid. You could also do this with a glass pipette placed in the graduated cylinder. So while I get set up, Let's talk about some of the challenges faced when doing this experiment. Recovering hydrochloric acid directly from a copper chloride solution using distillation is generally quite tricky. Here's why. In a copper chloride solution, the chloride ions are coordinated with copper ions rather than existing as free HCl. Distillation of the solution will primarily remove water and any free hydrochloric acid, leaving the bound chloride behind as part of the dissolved salt. If your copper chloride solution does not contain an excess of free HCl, for example, the solution is overly saturated with copper, then there is no significant amount of volatile HCl available to distill off. The chloride is locked in the salt. You must start with a solution where HCl is present in a free, volatile form. Without that, the chloride remains chemically bound to the copper, and most of what is distilled would be water. My solution is diluted, probably to twice its original volume due to multiple rinses. So, the acid in theory should already be around 20%, but due to the chloride ions being bound to the copper ions, the acid recovered will be significantly lower. What is going to happen during the distillation is the liquid will boil, vaporize into a gas, and travel up to the condenser, where it will condense back into a liquid and travel to the receiving jug as a clear dilute acid, leaving behind copper 2 chloride salt in the boiling flask. At this point, if you were to continue to heat the residue, the copper 2 chloride will begin to decompose to copper 1 chloride and chlorine gas. I'll let this run and I'll get back to you once it's finished. Oh, I almost forgot. Make sure you don't overfill your boiling flask. As the liquid expands, it needs a bit of room. Without it, the solution will boil over, and this happens. I'll clean this up and get back to you when the distillation is complete. And there you have it. The copper chloride residue is left in the boiling flask, and I have recovered 400 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. The next thing to do is to see how dilute this acid actually is. To test the acid's strength, I will be measuring its specific gravity. When testing the specific gravity of hydrochloric acid, a hydrometer is used to determine the concentration of HCl in the solution. The process follows Archimedes' principle, where the hydrometer floats higher in a denser, more concentrated acid, and lower in a less dense, diluted acid. To carry out the measurement, pour a sufficient amount of HCl solution into a clear, graduated cylinder. Carefully place the hydrometer into the acid and allow it to float freely avoiding contact with the cylinder's sides. Observe where the liquid surface meets the hydrometer scale. This gives you the specific gravity of the acid. You can then compare the reading with known values using a chart. The specific gravity of this acid is around 1.0525. This means that the acid recovered in the distillation is around 11%. Now we know the concentration of the acid. It's time now to remove as much of the water as possible using fractional distillation.
11% hydrochloric acid does have its uses. It is great for cleaning glassware, especially inside conical flasks and round-bottom flasks, or anywhere you can't get a scrubbing utensil. So even if you are able to buy concentrated hydrochloric acid, it might be worth doing this and keeping the acid for cleaning. I, however, want concentrated hydrochloric acid, so the next step for me is to remove the excess water from the acid and bring it to its azeotrope of 20.2%. For this, I need to set up for fractional distillation. This setup is similar to the simple distillation, but with the addition of a Vigru column. Simple distillation is ideal for liquids with a large boiling point difference or when separating a liquid from a salt. Fractional distillation is needed when separating complex mixtures or components with close boiling points. In this instance, the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius, and the boiling point of hydrochloric acid is 110 degrees Celsius. As there is a difference less than 25 degrees Celsius, fractional distillation is desired to separate the two effectively. The mixture is heated, causing the water, which has the lowest boiling point to start vaporizing first. The vapor then rises through the Vigro column, which contains multiple surfaces that allow the vapor to condense and re-evaporate. Each time the vapor condenses and re-evaporates, it becomes richer in the lower boiling water fraction. The hydrochloric acid, with a higher boiling point, will condense back down into the flask, and the water vapor will continue to rise. The purified water vapor eventually exits the column and is condensed into a liquid separated from the hydrochloric acid. If I zoom in, you may be able to see this in action. If you look closely at the center of the column, you will see a small drop of hydrochloric acid slowly form. I'll let this run for a while and get back to you shortly. I stopped the distillation when I started to notice acid dripping into the water. As the acid is more dense, you can see the droplets sink in the water. I'll test the specific gravity of the distillate to ensure it is mostly water. Water has a specific gravity of 1. And as you can see, the water fraction has a specific gravity of 1.005, which is around 1%. I've allowed the acid fraction to cool down for a couple of hours as temperature can affect the result of the test. Beautiful. It's spot on 1.1. If we take a look at the chart, it's right on the 20% mark. 20% concentration is good enough for most applications. It can be used to make dilute aqua regia and etch most metals. I prefer to have my acid concentrated, so on to chapter 3. To push the concentration of the acid beyond its azeotrope, hydrogen chloride gas needs to be generated and bubbled through the dilute 20% acid or through distilled water if you're making hydrochloric acid from scratch. The process is the same. To do this, I'll be using 170 grams of sodium bisulfate. This is sold as a pH lowering chemical for pools. Use 350 grams if you are making fresh acid. Next, add to the flask 85 grams of table salt. It doesn't need to be British. It just needs to be sodium chloride. If you are making fresh acid, you will need to use 170 grams. When you bubble hydrogen chloride gas through 20% hydrochloric acid, you are increasing the concentration of HCl in the solution. Here's what happens. The gaseous hydrogen chloride dissolves into the aqueous phase. Since hydrochloric acid is already a solution of hydrogen chloride in water, adding more hydrogen chloride gas increases the concentration. Once dissolved, hydrogen chloride undergoes nearly complete dissociation in water. 
Since hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, its dissociation is essentially complete. As more hydrogen chloride gas dissolves, the molarity of hydrogen chloride in solution increases. A 20% solution corresponds to roughly 6.8 mole. By continuing to bubble the gas through, you can push the concentration closer to the maximum 37%, or 12 mole, beyond which the solution cannot hold any more hydrogen chloride and will begin to release gas instead. I'm placing an ice bath around the gas washing bottle, as higher temperatures reduce hydrogen chloride solubility, so cooling the solution helps keep more gas dissolved. Once heat is applied, the sodium bisulfate will react with the sodium chloride to generate hydrogen chloride gas through a chemical reaction where the hydrogen ion from the bisulfate exchanges with the sodium ion from the chloride, essentially creating hydrochloric acid which then readily releases HCl gas. The bubbles that you can see at the moment are just air bubbles. Air is being expelled from the flask before the HCl gas gets pushed over. You will be able to tell when hydrogen chloride is being generated as the bubbles will almost completely dissolve in the water. The reaction is going to take a couple of hours to complete, so I'll let it run and get back to you shortly. The waves you see in the hydrochloric acid where the HCl gas is bubbling are caused by differences in the refractive index due to localized changes in concentration and density. Here's what's happening. As the HCl gas dissolves, it significantly increases the local concentration of hydrochloric acid in the immediate area where bubbling occurs. This creates regions of varying density in the liquid, which affects how light bends when passing through. More concentrated hydrochloric acid has a different refractive index than the surrounding solution. These variations cause light to bend in irregular patterns making the waves visible. The gas bubbles disturb the liquid, creating currents that further enhance the refractive effects. This motion creates a shimmering or wavy effect. After two hours, the bubbles have started to slow. So I'll disassemble the apparatus and we'll do a final specific gravity test to determine the concentration of the acid. This has been a fun little experiment and it shows that it is possible to recover a reagent from something that was essentially a waste solution. This has benefits to both the environment and your wallet. It's also a nice bit of knowledge for those of you who struggle to buy hydrochloric acid. Or maybe you can only purchase lower concentrations. For instance, in the UK since October last year, you can only purchase hydrochloric acid at 10% concentration. My small hydrometer won't be any use for testing concentrated hydrochloric acid, as it only has a range of between 1 and 1.12. I'll have to use this heavy liquid hydrometer instead, as the specific gravity I'm looking for is around 1.188. As you can see, it's exactly where it needs to be. I'll be using this acid to recover the precious metals from last year's filter papers, so keep a lookout for that video in the coming weeks. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.